Welcome to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. I'm a physician, medical intuitive, evidential psychic medium, international keynote speaker, and author of Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards. This award recognizes truly world-changing books that contribute to positive global change. The inspiration for this podcast came from my own life experiences. As I have journeyed through life, it has taught me that we're part of a greater divine web of interconnectedness. I have walked the path of illness, healing, and transformation. After two near-death experiences, I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, and was guided to attend medical school at the age of 54. We will be meeting with many different types of doctors, healers, as well as spiritual leaders, educators, and other inspiring souls in this podcast. It is my hope that you will gain information and create a path to healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and bridge the gap between science and soul. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudi.com. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. Welcome to Dr. Lottie's Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. Today, I am honored to introduce Kushal Choksi. Witnessing the devastation of 9-11 before his eyes, Kushal's thriving career as an analyst at Goldman Sachs was forever changed on September 11, 2001, as he made a split-moment decision to abandon his office and the co-workers who refused to leave the World Trade Center. Managing to narrowly escape, he witnessed the magnitude of death and destruction up close and was plunged into a lengthy depression where he found himself believing life was meaningless. His search for renewed purpose began with a reluctant trip to a breathwork workshop and eventually turned into a decades-long journey of spiritual discovery, mind-blowing metaphysical experiences, and a fierce devotion to the life-altering benefits of mindfulness and meditation. Today, Kushal and his wife run Elements Truffles, a New York-based artisanal chocolate company built on values of Ayurveda, sustainability, giving back, and ethical trade. Kushal is a trainer of personal development, meditation, wellness, and leadership programs for the Art of Living Foundation. He has taught secrets of breathwork and meditation to thousands across the U.S., Europe, and Asia, and he serves on the U.S. Board of the International Association for Human Values. He just released his first book, On a Wing and a Prayer, Spirituality for the Reluctant, the curious, and the seeker. So welcome, Kushal. I'm honored to have you as a guest today. Thank you, Dr. Laurie. Super excited. Thank you for having me. You've had quite a career uh, being working as a big executive for all these different companies, managing billions of dollars and, and uh, working in the World Trade Center. And what happened that day? Can you just tell us briefly, uh, when you talk about narrowly, escaping the World Trade Center collapse. Were you in the building when the airplanes hit? Yes, uh, I was in the North Tower, um, thankfully on a much lower floor. I was just coming out of the subway station and I was on my way out of the building when this um, first plane hit the the North Tower. And in that moment, of course, there was a helter-skelter around me and I had an option whether to leave the building or to go back in for there was a security person at the door who was asking people to go back into the building for it was unsafe to go out. Um, And 
as you, in your gracious, gracious introduction, said how I made a split second decision, you know, it was one of those moments where some of these decisions that you make kind of alter the course of your life. And against that instruction of the security person, I, I ran out. Um, and as I was looking at what had just happened, trying to make sense of it, the other plane, the second plane just came in front of my eyes and pierced the, the South Tower. Um, and, and it was also um, mind boggling to just imagine, let alone process what, what was just happening in front of me. And of course it was very clear in that moment that this was a deliberate action, uh, not a freak accident anymore. But an event like this, watching death from such close quarters create, created a momentous shift in my life, in my personal life, and it changed everything about how I looked at life in general. Wow, and then you talk about in your introduction about how then you plunged into this depression. And so how did you get out of that? How did you find the meditation and breath work and what impact did that have on you? I don't know, Dr. Lottie, if it was depression, but it was definitely a, a strong sense of disinterest. Um, you know, there was a part of me that was thinking that I was feeling grateful. I was thinking, yes, I'm so happy. I'm so lucky that I survived. So on part of me that had a, this renewed sense of enthusiasm to, to finish the unfinished business, if you will. To, to complete living that American dream that I had come to live in this country as, a, as an immigrant. So there was a renewed sense of urgency from one part of my, my psyche. But then the other part of my, uh, my being was saying, but then what's the point of this? What if something like this were to happen again and you're not so lucky the next time? So it was like, you know, like driving a car with, with the gas pedal and, and brakes on at the same time you know, two different diametrically opposite push and pull. Um, and, and that created a sense of um, void. It created a, a, a very a very unique feeling I'd never experienced before. I think, yeah, I, the first time I perhaps questioned if there was more to life than just, just this rat race that I was completely consumed in. And as I tried to make sense of it, you know, with the tools that I know, uh, or I knew in that moment, uh, which was just traveling the world or trying different things, changing careers and all that. Uh, and nothing seemed to help me in that moment. It would bring a temporary rush, a temporary um, feeling of euphoria, but then I would come back to that feeling of, um, no, no, there has to be something more. Um, in that moment, I found breath work and meditation reluctantly, albeit, a friend of mine suggested I should go, but I was not sure. I said, I don't want to go because isn't meditation something you do when, you, when you're done with everything life? Isn't it something you do when you're retired? Is that, I've heard meditation takes the edge off and I'm not ready, to, uh, ready for it yet. So I, my mind was coming up with all these funny excuses. Um, funny looking back, of course. Uh, in, in those moments, they, they appeared very real. Um, uh, but this, this, uh, this spiritual master, uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar was uh, traveling um, to, to, to New York from India and he had, this, um, he had this public event. So I somehow end up there. And the first time I experienced meditation, he, he, he led everyone through guided meditation. And the very first time I experienced that, that stillness between two ears, I, all my intellectual concepts kind of for the first time morphed into a tangible experience. And I, that moment I thought, perhaps there is something in here that may have answers to all the questions I have. I did not know if it was for sure would have any answers, but at least everything that I had tried and failed at looking for answers, I thought maybe this is the one place where I still haven't failed, so I, I need to keep going. And then, you know, I was a, you know, a very left brain analytical mind, Wall Street trained mind that would not take any experience on its face value. 
course, I began questioning, was there a placebo to it? Was there, did I fall asleep? Why I was feeling so good? So I started doing some, <laughs> some medical research, some scientific validation. And when I came across all this science that was supporting the breath work, I felt so empowered. I felt so strong and so good about what I had embarked upon that I kept going. I kept going deeper. So how did that end up changing your life? When did you leave uh, Goldman Sachs and the whole you know, trading business and, and veer off into chocolates and truffles? Oh, um, it, didn't, uh, it didn't happen immediately. You know, as um, what, what, what it definitely helped me with was um, clear some of my conditioning, clear some of the deep-rooted conditioning I had that, oh, um, as a kid, I knew I wanted to go to college. Once I was in college, I knew I had to go to, to America to, to study. Once I was there, I knew I had to get a, a, a decent job. You know, so all these, I was on a, on a cow path that was almost defined in front of me. And I was just walking with my blinders on, um, thinking that if I continue to walk, you know, I would become so-called successful in the eyes of the world. But as I, as I had my red pill moment, if you will, I realized, you know, I was too short to be playing safe. I really wanted to um, listen to my own own voice that was coming from within. And I realized that I had to do things that I really wanted to do, not just what world wanted me to do. And so my first change was change to a startup, which was again in the field of finance. Um, but I gave up a promising nine to five, or I should say nine to nine career uh, with an established firm to join a completely nondescript startup. And um, I, was, I was then employee number one on that startup. And after the success of that startup, um, I started a tech startup. And then my third startup was, uh, was a chocolate company, you know, a chocolate startup. Something that my wife and I always thought we should do something together. She was also on a, uh, on a trading desk on Wall Street. And, you know, we used to live like roommates seeing each other barely on weekends. And he said, you know what, enough. Let's just do something that A, creates some impact and B, is something we're really passionate about. Um, and, and when we made the list of things, two things kept coming up, chocolates and, and meditation. And we thought, wow, let's, let's marry these two things together. And, you know, Ayurveda chocolates were born. So that's how we, we created this, um, this our little food startup without any background in food, without not knowing anything about chocolates, just except that they taste amazing and that we wanted to create something uh, that was so wholesome uh, and, and bring that to the world. And that's how it started. <laughs> I love it. And so you went through a major transformation that does you just said, okay, I'm going to go change my life and I'm going to follow my passion. So how long had you been in the finance career when you then made the switch into just following that passion of, you know, doing the chocolates? Um, well, fin I was in finance for almost 10 years. And after that, I had another startup, uh, which was a tech startup. Um, and I, I was with that for about three, three, three years. So given here and there almost 14 years before I started my own chocolate business. Wow. But I've learned from someone like you, it's never too late. <laughs> it's never too late, right? It's never too late. All you listeners out there, just go for it. Find, you know, follow that passion, follow your passion in your heart and just change your life. Um, and so I know you, you went into the chocolate business. You also have been teaching people. So this whole meditation and mindfulness had a big impact on how you view yourself in the world. So can you talk a little bit about how you ended up uh, teaching meditation all over the world? You know, it's just something, it's a nature of joy, I think, Dr. Lari. If you find something, like simple thing is like if you, if you see a nice movie, you will tell your friends like, hey, I watched a nice movie. Why don't you go check it out? Right? You read a nice book, you'll tell people about it. 
I think mine is a very similar case. I, I learned this very transformational breathing technique uh, called sky breath, sky breath meditation. And that completely changed about how I, how I looked at my life, how I looked at the world. And now I just pay it forward. I volunteer my time um, to, to pay it forward and, and share this technique with the world because I feel everyone on the planet should experience that, that stillness, that calm that I have experienced and everything else that it brings along with it, that, that clarity, the focus, the, the, the refineness of intuition, that, that strength to follow your passion, everything that it brings with it. Um, I, I feel it's, it's a gift. And, and so I, I, I learned first. And then another thing I feel is that uh, when, when you teach something, you know, two people learn, you know, the, 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 the person who's there in front of you and you. So, um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I think the best way to learn something is by teaching. Uh, every time I um, facilitate a session, my technique, my learning goes deeper. I get to meet with amazing individuals around the world. Um, and and that's, a, that's a beautiful, beautiful um, part of my life where um, I get to give back and, and, and benefit at the same time. So if there are listeners out there that say now, wow, I would like to learn how to meditate from, from Kushal, do you, how do they sign up for something? How do they find your classes? Is it just um, through the organization or do you also do it privately? No, I do not do it privately. I teach through organization, through this mm -hmm. nonprofit organization called the Art of Living Foundation. Um, so you can go on Art of Living Foundation and look for Sky Breath Meditation uh, and as me as an instructor, or I also list the same program on my website. Um, my website is kushalchoksi.com, my first name and last name.com. And towards the end of the uh, bottom of the website, towards the end of the page, uh, my upcoming workshop would be listed. But again, when you click on it, it'll still take you to the foundations page and, and you'll <laughs> sign up there. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I would love to facilitate uh, you know, a, a program um, with with your listeners, Dr. Lloyd. Um, and, and yeah, that's how you get in touch. Right. And so now looking back at your life, working in finance and the stress and nine to nine, what advice would you give to the people that are still in that rat race? Do you think that they would benefit from learning meditation? Oh, absolutely. I think... Follow the heart, right? If your heart is in that, um, in that, that world, by no means do not give up, you know, go with all your heart. I mean, I learned so much on, on my Wall Street, uh, in, in my Wall Street career. I would not, if I were to do it all over again, I would still perhaps do that. So I'm, you know, it, it was a, an amazing run. Um, only thing that if I could change about that was, finding this way to deal with the stress that it brings along. With it. Um, I, when I was on a, I used to work on a trading desk, it used to be intense. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of pressure that, that you go through uh, in, the min, in, in the matter of hours, um, it's, it's something I've never experienced, uh, you know, uh, ever before. And it's just because the stakes are so high. You're dealing with, um, you know, you're dealing with so much, money um in that moment and and it's it's just very it's a very responsible um thing to do um, and, and a small action can create big big impact mm -hmm. um positive or negative <laughs> and and so I, I feel that that stress is unavoidable but if you have a practice like this under your belt um the way you respond to it becomes very different the way you deal with those stressors of Wall Street, it's completely different when you have a tool like this of a breath work and meditation. Like I very remember for the first time when I thought that this practice really worked is after learning this, after it was about a couple of months of practicing it and there was a, a meltdown moment in the markets and you know how this animated the trading desk becomes, you know, People start shouting, throwing the phones, um, you know, swearing, screaming. 
And I would usually participate in all that. Um, but this afternoon, when the hell was breaking loose, I was just composed and I was just calm. And I did not let that everything around me kind of turn me into that. Um, I was very much in control of my, my the whole situation in my, about myself to the extent that my, my boss towards the end of the day came to me and said, if I was okay, you know, that, you know, what was wrong with you? You know, <laughs> you were very quiet. Were you, is, is your health okay? And I was like, oh, this is only thing that has changed is this. And perhaps this is working. You know, so, so yeah, it, Wall Street is an amazing place to grow. But having this can, in my experience, my personal experience, perhaps can add rocket boosters to the progress. <laughs> <laughs> so in this meditation, now some people will say, oh, it's so hard to meditate. I can't let go of my thoughts. And I, you know, think of the grocery list and all the things I have to do. So how do you get, how do you calm the mind and how do you get rid of all the thoughts in your head? It's a fantastic question, uh, Dr. Laurie, because I was one of them. I, for once, could not meditate because I did not know how to get rid of thoughts. The minute I would close my eyes, the whole to-do list, the whole dinner plans, the, the, the vacation, everything would, would just pop up. And then I realized when I learned sky breath is I was doing it all wrong by trying to get rid of thoughts because trying to do anything requires some sort of effort. And the mind does not work with effort. Mind does not relate to this whole concept of effort. Have you tried to not think of something? Like you close your eyes and say, okay, I'm not going to think of something. That's the first thing that pops up in the head. It's not good or bad. That's just the nature of mind. But what I learned is that through the modulations of your own breath, you can control the mind. And when you do that, the sky breath, this technique, through it's a it's a it uses the rhythms of your own breath. So there was no resisting a thought, there was no focusing on an object, there was no getting rid of anything. All I had to do was just to sit and breathe, and that put my mind into a state which was meditation. So there was no real effort involved there. It was just whatever I did with my eyes closed and just breath work, it became meditation. I just, it just took my mind and I just sank into that space of nothingness. And that was beautiful. And I loved it because that did not require an effort. You know? And that's why this, this breath work and this technique stuck with me. You know, my, my wife used to make fun of me. She would say, I'm a spiritual shopper because I tried all these different modalities and all these different breath work. It, some reason it did not, it, it was a great feel good experience, a uh, great intellectual concept, but it was not a, it, it was not an experience that touched my core. You know, it was not something that I said, aha, this is it. When I came to sky breath after trying everything, I was like, yes, finally, I think I found something that, that could work. And I've been with it for the last 16 years. Wow. So it really changed your life. Absolutely. Right. So do you meditate every day? I meditate every day. Yes. And how yes. long do you meditate every day? Now that you've been doing it, obviously, for a long time. But what are you, how long do you meditate per day now about? I started with um, meditating about uh, just about 20 minutes every day in the morning. You know, I would just do this sky breath uh, you know, technique. I would practice that. Um, and that would kind of be a, that would set the tone for the rest of the day. So I would do that in the morning. And as I got deeper into the practice, um, I also added another practice in the evening. Another 20 minutes I, I meditate in the evening mm -hmm. to kind of reset the, the day after the end of a busy day or, or the end of the work day. I, I make the most out of my evenings after I had a little cleaning of that slate. You know, I can enjoy my evenings a lot more. 
um, and not carry work home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so so I I meditate twice a day now. Mm-hmm. About half an hour, twenty yeah. to thirty minutes each time. Yeah. And for the listeners that are now thinking, wow, maybe I should start meditating. What advice do you have to them? You know, I say it's never too late. It's just, and it's so effortless. You know, the oftentimes we think we are too busy to meditate. Oftentimes we think, oh, meditation is not for me. Meditation would probably, some, as I said earlier, I always thought meditation would mean that I would have to give up my pursuits, it would give up my pleasures that, I'm, that I'm, I enjoy and, and perhaps become a monk to meditate. But all that is, is inaccurate. You know? Meditation just makes your life, it adds so much texture, it adds so much juice to the other part of the life um, and makes you enjoy what you enjoy even more. It, it's, it, without that, all that cobwebs that, that somehow crowd our awareness. So um, just a simple breathwork technique, just 20 minutes a day um, is enough to get you started. And I think another thing I would like to share is it's not like you have to wait for months or years for you to start seeing the benefits. The very first day or within the first few days, you will start seeing that this, that, you know, it starts paying you dividends. You know, I was a trader. I always looked at everything as an investment. Um, and for this, I looked at return on investment of my time. So I wanted some practice that actually, you know, gave back as I invested. I committed to invest 20 minutes of my precious day. Um, and, and this was, this started paying back from the very first day. <laughs> It is amazing once people you know, find, find meditation uh, and what an impact it has on people's lives. And I love how um, you explained that it creates more clarity. It's not that you become more like a zombie. It actually makes you work better. You have more clarity. You can see your, your goals and everything more clearly than if you don't meditate because it creates, like you said, the, the cobwebs, it's such a great description gets rid of the cobwebs in front of your eyes. So, I personally think, Dr. Laurie, there is, if in this world, if there is one privilege, it is that of awareness. That if you are aware of everything and whatever in your life and everything that's going on, you show up in the world very, very differently. Mm-hmm. And meditation, for me, sky breath or meditation helped me kindle that awareness. It's such a gift. Such a gift. So now that you've been on this spiritual journey for about 15 years, is it mm-hmm. now? Um, you, do you question um, the status quo? And what does that mean to you now? I think I got into this journey because I questioned the status quo. You know, um, now I'm a lot more in acceptance of, of, of whatever it is. But, but yeah, you know, it was my questioning the status quo that got me onto this, um, onto this wild ride. Um, but, but yeah, I, 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 there's a lot more, there's a lot more being in the moment now, not as a concept, you know, not as a, uh, as something that I have to tell myself. It just, it just happens more and more naturally. Uh, as the practice gets deeper. And you have um, a spiritual master. You found a spiritual master that guided you mm-hmm. along the way. Um, what, uh, what is a spiritual master and why should you have one? I would have given you a very different answer if you had asked the same question perhaps 20 years ago or, or 15, 16 years ago. Because I always thought that you didn't need you, there was no need for one. Um, I was actually averse to, to the concept of a spiritual master. But now that I have practiced with one, I realize how important it is to have one because this whole realm of meditation and, and finding yourself, if you will, it is so abstract. It is not written in any books. It's not there on, on, on Google for you to search. 
you need someone who is experienced enough to, to walk you out of the maze of your own mind. You can still perhaps find your way out, but why do it when you can have someone who knows the way out lead the way? Right? Why learn, why make the same mistakes that somebody else ahead of you has perhaps already made and, and, and learned? So I feel like how you go to a college to, to learn maths or finance or, or arts, um, you need a teacher, a guide or a coach to, to get you on this path and, and make your progress much, much more expedited. I love it. And it's, it can be such a great uh, spiritual journey to have somebody guide you along the way. And like you said, walk your, walk yourself out of your own maze. Yeah. It's... Yeah. So how, how has your view of the purpose of life changed for you since 9-11? You know, I did not even think if I had a purpose back then. <laughs> I, I never asked if I had a purpose or what was the purpose. If I had a purpose, it was just to accumulate and become successful. Perhaps that was my purpose. Um, and I realized as I practiced that there, perhaps there's a lot more to life than just that. Um, of course, there is a joy in, in accumulating. There's a joy in gaining. There's a joy in progressing in, in material world. No doubts about it. But there's also a deeper joy um, when you really understand the, the real source of the joy, that when you understand that the, the purpose of what you're looking for is, is somewhere within, um, that's, and that as an experience, not as a concept, Dr. Lodi, as an experience, it's amazing. Then, 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 then you get unstuck. You, you move through life um, without getting stuck. And that perhaps is, isn't that the, the, the goal of, for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, I talk about, you know, listen to your heart, or, you know, get out of your mind. You know, it's, it's listening to that, the, the true essence of who you really are, the true essence uh -huh. of your being uh, and bringing that forth. And then it becomes effortless because you are following the passion of who you incarnated to be in this incarnation but it's when we're when we are we might be productive right and we're, we're driven but there is there is a difference because you're you know you're just driven to do things because you were told to go after these goals versus um, manifesting your calling in life which is very different right yeah. so you're just finding that true essence of, of who you really are and why you incarnated and what is your life purpose and listening to that. But I think that is so hard because we're so trained in school and, you know, become something in the title and the status and making money and, and doing all these different things that we sort of get lost in that. And it, we end up in the rat race without even knowing how we got there. And then we're kind of stuck with all our bills and, and we forget <laughs> and we, yes. we sort of lose track of it. And that's what it's so great. Uh, you know, with the meditation and, and finding that true purpose. But I want you to tell us about the elements truffles, your chocolate business. How, so tell us about the chocolates. What's so amazing with, with the chocolates? Why are they different? Why is your business different? Well, um, we wanted to create something that has a purpose. So we created this company where we actually get our produce directly from the remote and impoverished areas of Ecuador. We work directly with the farmers, no middlemen involved. Um, so they get paid the more than a fair share of their wages. And um, when the product comes here, it's manufactured my, very mindfully. Uh, the team meditates before making the, making the products. And from the, pro, from, the produ, from the proceeds that we get from the sales, 25% of the profits are given towards the education of the underprivileged children. So it creates some impact somewhere. There's a lot of heart in the, in the supply chain end to end. And these chocolates are wholesome. You know, they are made with 
ingredients that even our grandparents could recognize. You know, there are only three ingredients in our products, more or less. There is cacao, um, there is honey that we use as a sweetener, and then we mix them with, uh, with um, or infuse them with superfoods, which are actually good for you. There is no dairy, there is no refined sugar, there is no processed anything, nothing artificial, no preservatives, no lecithins, stuff that, that, that we see in the, today's food uh, quite rampant. So we wanted to create something that's simple because we, we really feel that anything that's beautiful, anything that's, that's amazing has to be simple. It has to have very, very minimal approach to it. And that's, um, we follow this ancient science of Ayurveda, uh, also the sister science to yoga, like how yoga focuses on body and mind. Ayurveda focuses on, on what you put in the body. So it, it, it's all about the cleanliness and minimalism of ingredients. And, and so our chocolates are inspired by this nutritional science of Ayurveda. I love it. My mouth is watering just listening, you, <laughs> listening to you talking about the chocolates. So the chocolates are gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, and very clean, sustainably farmed, and uh, helps the world, you know, in many ways, uh, giving yes. back to the community. And how can people find these chocolates? Now, everybody that's, you know, have a, are salivating listening, <laughs> how, do they, how do they find your chocolates? You can find them on our website, elementstruffles.com, or you can find on Amazon, or you can find it in the whole, at the Whole Foods near you or, or, or many of the stores that carry us. But yeah, on the website, we, we ship it for free, elementstruffles.com. <laughs> Going to be checking that out later this evening. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds amazing. And so tell us, um, tell me about your book. So you just released a book. It was recently published about a month ago or so uh, on a wing and a prayer. What led you to write the book and what is the book about and why should people read it? Um, actually, it got launched in Asia a month ago. Uh, it got released in US just three days ago. Um, and, you know, as I tiptoed this tightrope between science and spirituality and found my own, um, you know, practice, it didn't always start that way. I was quite reluctant. I was um, guarded. I was curious, but I was uh, skeptical. Um, and, but I was fortunate also at the same time to, to still stumble upon a, a very precious technique. And I feel that was, a, that was something I wanted to share with the world. Um, that if I can do it, anyone can. If a left-brained, uh, questioning mind like me can experience that, that's, uh, that calm and stillness, um, there is definitely uh, everyone who, who can experience that would be, a, a, would be such a joy for me to share it with the world and, and have people experience it. So that was the, that was the only motivation for me to, to write this. Um, and I was very fortunate that I got the, um, uh, I got an amazing publisher, Penguin brought it to the world. Um, and, and yeah, um, I, I want everyone to, to if, if, if this resonates with you, you know, talk to me, write to me. And I would love to, you know, talk more about, about this breath, breath work meditation with you. And, and we can together explore how deep the rabbit hole goes. I love it. And where can people find the book? Is it available online? Uh, yes, on amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles. Um, it should soon come to the, to the you know, brick and mortar stores as well. Uh, but it's just launched. So amazon.com, yeah, or, or any online platform. I love it. And um, before we wrap up, uh, can you again tell the two websites, the chocolate website and your own website? Yes, the chocolate website is Elements Truffles, um, Elements with an S and Truffles with an S.com. And my personal website 
where you can find about the book, um, my, my sky breath, uh, upcoming sky breath workshop is kushalchoksi.com. Um, my first name and last name.com. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing all your wisdom. And I will put the two website in the podcast notes. So you can just go to the podcast notes and, and click and you'll find his website and his chocolates. So again, thank you so much, Kushal, for uh, being my guest today. Thank you, Dr. Lott. It's been an honor. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Dr. Lotti Science with Soul. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast, as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com. My book, Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards, is available online at Amazon, as well as other online platforms worldwide. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me, to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com.